Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 43 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, we're going to learn all about Java server pages. However, if you haven't watched my Java servlet tutorial, there's links above. You should definitely watch that because we're going to use some of that code. All right, so let's just get into it. Now, this is my servlet that we made before. And if you see down here, this is where we had to print out HTML and body and all this nonsense. Well, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get around that. And of course, we're going to do that with Java server pages. So let's get into the code. If you can't see this, just view it full screen. It's an HD video. We're going to click on web content and then we're going to go new and then we're going to go JSP file. And I'm going to call this calculate JSP because that's kind of what I'm going to do. And it ends with dot JSP. And then I just click on next. Make sure you have new JSP HTML file selected and then click finish. All right. So that's now opened up here on the screen. And now a Java server page is just an HTML file with Java embedded using really cool little tags. And of course, it ends with JSP instead of HTML. This guy right up here, what we have to do is you need to learn what all these little tags are. It's real simple. There's only four of them. So this guy right up here, where we're defining the language and the content type and the character set and all that, is what is known as a JSP directive. And you use it to set options and, as well, import libraries, which I'm going to show you here in a second. So let's just jump down here right before the HTML area. And let's say there's a library that you need to use. Well, we're just going to use the directive to be able to come in here and set that all up. So if you want to import a library, you just type in page followed by import equal to whatever library you want to bring in here. There's the math library. And make sure you surround it with quotes, but in this situation, we do not need to put a semicolon in there. And we're going to jump down into the body section. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is what is called a scriptlet. What we're going to do with this is you just make a little mark in there with that little percent sign. And a scriptlet is going to allow you to just basically enter any type of Java code directly right into the HTML. So let's say I wanted to go out, say I'm just going to go out print just like we did before and say today's day and put a colon inside of there. And in this situation with scriptlets, you need to put a semicolon in there. And as you're going to see here in a minute, you're also going to be able to stretch this across multiple lines so you don't have to keep typing this little bracket in here with the percent sign. Then the next type of code that you have in Java server pages are what are called expression codes. With that, you're just going to come in there, put the little bracket, parentheses, and equal to, let's say I wanted to say new Java util date. I want my date to show up in there. Remember, I don't need a semicolon with this guy and that is going to automatically just shoot out the current date and time and all that other information and an expression evaluates to a string that's what it does so basically whatever you would put inside of here this guy right here whatever you have in here in regards to code has to output a string and then that string is going to pop on the screen wherever you have this all set up up next we're going to get into declarations and let's say for example you wanted to declare some type of method or some type of field or variable whatever you want to call it inside of a Java server page. You just put these little brackets with the percent sign followed by an exclamation point. And then you could go int number one, for example, and number two. And with this guy, you do have to put a semicolon in as well. So like I said, any variable or field or method or anything that you create on this page is going to be accessible to all the other code as long as it is set up here inside of a declaration. I'm just going to throw some break statements in here. See, just basic HTML, very easy to work with. And let's say I wanted to create a form and then have whatever the result of the information that is sent into the form is automatically shot back to this same Java server page and process. So what I'm going to do is just basically come in here and go create a form. And I'm going to say that my action is going to be equal to whatever the name of this is. And this is called calculate JSP dot JSP. So basically whatever is sent inside of here is going to be shot back to this and then process. So I'm going to go method and I'm going to go post like that. And then let's say that I want to have the person enter two numbers like that and then throw in an input box type is equal to text and then name is equal to and I'm just going to call this num1 close off that input and I'm going to select this guy here I'm going to have another input and I'm just going to call this number two just to make this nice and simple and then of course I'm also going to have to come in here let's just go like this and then type in submit 
put in a submit button inside of there and let's change the value equal to calculate and then I need to of course close off my form which is right there now what is really neat is I'm gonna say then the answer and I'm gonna use a JSP expression again remember that evaluates to a string so we just put our percent signs followed by equals and then if I say request get parameter just like we did whenever we were messing around with scriptlets and I say that I want whatever the value of number one is to show up inside of there and then remember, we don't need to come in here and put a semicolon. Paste that there. And then I'm also going to shoot out whatever number two is equal to. And then down here, I'm going to create a block of code that I'm going to be playing around with. And this is a scriptlet area for us to write our code. Now, if I want to be able to process all of this, I need to throw everything inside of a try block. See, just like regular Java. And then I'm going to reference that field or variable I created above. Now, remember, we're going to have to turn this into an integer if we want to perform an addition here because request get parameter always returns a string and I'm going to say whatever num1 is in this situation I'm going to close that off and then I'm going to go num2 and change this to num2 create an integer and go sum of nums is equal to number one plus number two and then if I want to print out the screen I'll just go out print and then let's say I want to go um, equals to get rid of that and go sum of nums and that's going to print out that result out to my screen and because I have a try block of course I'm gonna to have to have a catch block and the error that it's gonna throw is number format exception and I'm just gonna call this EX and in this situation you know do stuff whatever that stuff might be that you'd like to do and if we file save this guy it's gonna be real simple we just go calculate JSP right click on it and then inside of here you're just gonna have to go run as run on server go next make sure that lesson 41 sat over there and hit finish and there it is and this guy will add numbers for me and do all kinds of other things and you also see the date shows up in there and if I hit calculate it's gonna go four or five is equal to nine and of course I could just come in here and correct that quite easily by coming in here between these two guys and throwing a plus sign in there saving it again and right click run as run on server and there you go four or five calculate now we have that right all the code in this tutorial is underneath of the video you can also vote on whatever my next big tutorial is going to be leave any questions or comments below otherwise till next time